This is a list summarising my overall responsibilities in the production of Curiosity. It started off with thumbnailing. During our group discussions, I wanted a way to visually record people's ideas. It helped identify different gaps within the story, and being able to experiment with different transition shots was also useful in developing the script and animatic. To establish the astronaut's character, I wanted to emphasise his carelessness through his interactions with the environment. The effect of him disturbing native plant species leads him to fall into a vine trap, where he then smashes his radar, and it leaves an open door for us to introduce Curiosity as being a helpful and kind-hearted character, without having been detected by his radar. It creates a butterfly effect where the audience could follow along easily. It was also a way for me to develop what the environment looked like. I created drawings of Curiosity's cavern as an amalgamation of junk that he's turned into a system personalised to him. It adds onto his character and it shows that he's a tinker at heart and also has been collecting junk ever since he's been on this planet. I wanted to keep the logline really simple as I tend to have a lot of ideas and can sometimes stray away from the original story, especially during the production stage. So being able to have a solid script and a summary of the film was important for me to not overcomplicate the idea. The same goes for the synopsis as well. For the script, it was my way of showing I had a solid understanding of what the beginning and ending would look like. It's a combination of everyone's ideas, where we left the middle climax empty as we still hadn't figured out what was going to happen. But we understood that the beginning of the film had to be uplifting and unsuspecting of what was going to happen at the end. Therefore, the script was written in a way where the audience understands that the astronaut has no care in preserving this new habitat. And as a way of foreshadowing Curiosity's demise, I wanted the ship to initially land on and crush an innocent rover, humming happy birthday to itself. It's a nod to the NASA Mars rover who was also called Curiosity. But anyways, when it zooms out, we as the audience are first introduced to our main protagonist, Curiosity who is excited by something new. Since we wanted the ending to be tragic, the beginning and middle gave us the opportunity to try and establish a meaningful relationship between the two characters. For the ending, I wanted Curiosity to bring the astronaut and the broken radar back into its home for repairs. As we as audience members can relate to how home is a place where we feel the most safest. It's also a place where we keep our memorabilia and our achievements displayed was an important factor in establishing his character before his tragic demise. My mood board for Curiosity was trying to bring inanimate objects to life. I wanted to intertwine him with nature physically to show that he is grounded to his surroundings and has become part of his world. Collaging is my form of visual storytelling. It helps people understand my vision of a concept and also helps me translate aspects from the real world into my drawings. These are my concept designs for Curiosity. I played around with many shapes, spherical to more detailed, and experimenting whether he floats or whether he's a rover, and also what he would look like wearing human clothing. After discussion and group feedback, the final model was made with a much simpler and cleaner silhouette, so you can read him from afar. His body is simplified for modelling and rigging purposes. The astronaut design was a little underdeveloped, but we knew we wanted him to juxtapose from Curiosity's silhouette. He had to be sturdy, intimidating and structured. His suit was referenced from old scuba gear from the late 1800s. They were bulky and hard to move in and difficult to see through. I played around with simple shape language, but I also wanted to be more creative in terms of what the helmet could look like. I played around with different framing. The concept design for the spaceship was simple and mainly focused on ease of modelling. I was hoping these drawings of the environment would help the group in terms of production, as they can use this as reference for the layout of the shot and how detailed the animation needs to be. This is the storyboard that I drew based off the script, and the shots were later used in the animatic. Curiosity was modelled, textured and rigged by me and Maya. I encountered some geometry issues when importing from Maya to Unreal, parts of his body would be glowing, and that was due to bad topology. The issue was solved by remodeling parts that were glowing. The first pass of 
Curiosity's textures made him look really dull. To fix that, I added more scuff marks around his eyelid and gave him more life to his eyes. And later on, I added more decals and scuff marks onto his body using Adobe Substance Painter. When modeling the space radar, I wanted it to look like the astronaut silhouette. Sturdy, strong, symmetrical. From the reference images, I took away how claustrophobic the inside of a spaceship is. I liked how the framing of each photo would guide your eyes to the center to help emphasize this effect. I modeled a detailed centerpiece and two simpler desks by the side so your eyes would be guided towards the middle. I modeled and textured another detailed piece for a different shot inside the ship. I wanted to create a visual and eye-catching shot so the centerpiece was well detailed while the background was super simple. After the animatic, I created a shot list Everyone was able to assign their roles and what shots they would be animating. Since most of my group members were unfamiliar of the Maya to Unreal pipeline, I created a document of how to export and import FBXs and the nuances and technical issues that can come with it and how to avoid it. I was familiar in the process of Maya Human IK, so most of the time was used on weight painting. The rigging of Curiosity was simple as well as we planned it to be, but I faced the most issues when it came to parenting constraints. The lighting language for this film had to be ominous, it had to make you feel like you're alone and isolated. I was involved in the animation process, the lighting and exporting of animations, and also rendering most of the shots within Unreal. I also assigned the responsibility to edit and put together the film, which includes compositing as well. Shot one was a simple walk across, and this is how I lit the scene. It's bright and vibrant to catch the eye of the audience. For shot two, we have his shadow looming over the space radar, where he picks it up and walks into the main cockpit. The colors are now more ominous and scarier, where the astronaut ship is now face to face with Curiosity's planet. Shot 5 establishes the natural lighting of the environment, and shot 6 with the opening of the spaceship, it introduces unnatural light. Shot 7 provides new context to the environment, which goes back into the ominous lighting from the cockpit. When it came to animating, I used reference from YouTube. The lighting inside the forest was really dark, so I had to find a balance between not having too much exposure and having enough, where the characters are readable. It led to me experimenting with lighting as a way of showing mood, rather than just lighting a space. Through animation, I was able to show how attentive curiosity could be as well. For this shot, I used reference from an old man getting up. As in the film, his suit would be heavy and bulky to manoeuvre in. I've animated a lot of shots and it would be too time consuming to go through all of them. But I quickly want to touch upon the post-production. I didn't want to overcomplicate it, so I used Procreate and Premiere. And used compositing green screens that we pre-planned during pre-production. 